Kia ora. Hello. Happy New Year. Welcome to episode one of a new series by Popular Urbanum, Medieval Fabrics. This video is intended as a quick primer on three basic weaves that it's important to understand when you're beginning to learn about medieval fabrics. Why is it this important, you ask? Well, unless you're really cashed up, then as a reenactor, you're going to have to make a lot of your own medieval reproduction clothing, which means knowing your fabrics. Even if you do buy all or most of your kit, you need to have lots of specialist knowledge to help you make wise buying decisions so that you only purchase items that improve your impression. The added benefit to knowing a lot about medieval fabrics is that you can sometimes find a good thrifted item or even begin to create your own medieval reproduction textiles. Today, the three basic weaves I'll be covering are plain weave, also known as tabby weave, twill weave, and satin weave. I'll just be going through the structure of these weaves for now and maybe list a few well-known examples of these weaves from the Middle Ages. Firstly, I'll show you plain weave, the most basic of all weave structures. You may have used this weave structure in primary school craft lessons and I'm going to demonstrate this structure likewise today with coloured paper. The warp the yarns that run along the fabric and the weft, the yarns that run across the fabric, crisscross each other evenly such that when the warp yarns are lying straight, each weft yarn passes over one and then under one and so on, repeating this pattern until a mesh is formed. This example has a red warp and a green weft. Expressed numerically, we can say this is a one by one weave because the weft follows a one over, one under pattern. Some examples of this in the medieval period would include wool flannel, wool broadcloth, linens which are used for undergarments, linings, veils and underclothes in different periods, silk taffeta and silk voile or crepe for veils. Here are some examples of modern plain weave fabrics. Firstly, I have here a couple of pieces of silk, one in pink and one in black. This one is what a lot of people call habite silk. It's just a plain weave, quite fine. People use it for lining garments these days. This one is just, uh, I believe, a hand-woven pink silk tabby weave. Uh, it's just come in the form of a beautiful handwoven scarf. That's actually quite quite close to um, a medieval silk that I've seen in um, the Museum of London collection. Not with my own eyes unfortunately, just in pictures. This here is a piece of 100% wool flannel. That's also a tabby weave. Found that in an op shop. Probably will turn that into a pair of hose one day. Here we have a piece of billiard table felt, which you may recognize from one of our previous videos. This is very sim similar to a medieval broadcloth. Uh, this uh, colour was also achievable, or something similar to, was also achievable with medieval dyes. There are other variants of plain weave, but I won't touch on those here, as they go beyond the scope of this video. Secondly, let's talk about twill weave, or weaves more precisely, as there are many different kinds of twill weave. You can easily identify twills by the diagonal lines across the fabric created by the weave pattern. The weave patterns in twills are staggered. The weave pattern in plain weave was one by one, meaning one over, one under. The plain weave fabric also had the same appearance on both sides of the fabric. For a twill weave, it's different. It can be an even weave pattern or an uneven weave pattern. Often it is uneven, for example as seen in the denim of your jeans, meaning that the fabric looks different on either side. I'll show you a warp faced 2x1 twill weave using a paper model. You can see here the dark blue warp threads 
passing over two orange weft threads, then under one orange weft thread in a repeating pattern. Remember, this is a warp face twill, so the face of the fabric, or the right side, the side you see on the outside of the garment, is the one on which the warp yarns dominate. Observe the whale going diagonally across the fabric weave in a Z direction. It could just as easily have been woven with the whale going in an S direction. The back, or wrong side, of the warp face 2x1 twill is very different in appearance to the front, or face, or right side. Here are some examples of modern twill fabrics. I have here a scrap of yellow twilled wool. I'm not sure of the weave structure, I haven't done an analysis on it, so, but it looks at first glance to be about a maybe a 2 by 3 structure or 2 by 2 this one is another piece that I bought from a supplier uh, this is a uh, has a different uh, color of yarn in the warp and the weft and that's actually uh, something that was done in the medieval period uh, the weave structure of this is um, I think it's quite similar to a early 14th century weave structure. It's it's um, more than a two by three or something. It's it's an unusual weave structure, but it it is similar to some of the uh, early 14th century ones. Um, so I'm going to use that hopefully one day for maybe a hood or something like that. I think so. That's a nice one. Here we have uh, another piece. This one I believe I found out to be um, silk and wool blend, which is nice. Um, this one has a herringbone pattern uh, and as you can see different on the back to the front quite red on one side, quite yellow on the other. And I'll just give you a close-up of that beautiful herringbone pattern created by the twill weave. There are so many ways to describe twill weaves and it can get a little confusing. Briefly though, Warp faced means that you mostly see the warp yarns on the right side of the fabric and weft faced means that you mostly see the weft yarns on the right side of the fabric. Keep in mind that the right side of the fabric means the side of the fabric that will show on the outside of the garment. Some medieval examples of twill weaves include 2x1 warp faced twill wools from early to mid 14th century London the 2x2 two two twill wool Vadmal from the Greenland finds and from and Vadmal from other locations and early medieval Polish and Norwegian finds of 2x2 two two herringbone and 2x2 two two diamond twills. Understanding twill weave also helps us think about the complex weft faced compound twills or Samites, proto lampus and twill damasks of the Middle Ages. This is not an exhaustive list of fabrics, and please excuse my pronunciation. By the way, those distinctive diagonal lines Twill has are called whales, which is spelt like the country, not the ocean-going mammals. These whales can run diagonally from top to bottom, left to right, or S direction, or they can run from top to bottom, right to left, or Z direction. Generally, when you cut out your medieval garment in twill fabric, all the whales need to go around the body in the same direction, for example, all clockwise. The lines, not the cetaceans, they should be able to go wherever they please. Finally, onto satin weave. Satin is characterized by its long floats or lengths of yarns that are not bound under by an opposing yarn. These floats give satin its luster. 
Generally, we can say a weave is a satin if it has floats that reach across more than four opposing yarns. An example of a medieval satin weave is a five end satin, which means that it has five ends, or warp yarns, floating over the weft in a repeating pattern. It is essentially a kind of twill, but a twill with a really long float. For, in other words, a four by one warp faced twill. Here, I'll show you this medieval satin weave with a paper model. Here, I'll show you this medieval satin weave with the paper model. Here, we can see the really long warp floats traveling over the weft yarns. As before, when we were looking at the 2x1 warp faced twill, this 5 end satin weave, or 4x1 warp faced twill, has purple warp yarns that pass over 4 weft yarns, then under 1 weft yarn in a repeating pattern. Likewise, you can see that the weft yarns are making the same pattern in reverse. They travel under 4 over 1. This is a warp faced weave, so the warp is dominant here. As with the previous twill weave, the back, or wrong side, looks very different to the front, or right side, of the satin weave. Here are some examples of modern silk satin fabrics. I have here a black silk satin weave. This is a very transparent one. It's also quite a loose weave compared with other modern silk satins. Um, I wouldn't say this is really close to a medieval satin, but uh, medieval silk satins were quite loose, loosely woven. This is another piece of a similar grade of silk satin, just in red, just a little scrap. Also just kind of acquired along the way. I don't remember where, but it's another example of a fairly loosely woven, quite thin silk satin. Let me have a close look at the weave there. Beautifully pressed as well, as always. Here I have a scrap of silk satin that's been embroidered onto. This is not an example of a medieval uh, European style embroidery. However, it does incorporate some of the uh, elements of uh, European medieval embroidery, such as the uh, gold work around the edges and the um, couching, I mean the, sorry, the stem stitch there in the coloured threads. Um, and also the fact that the embroidery is worked onto satin, which is typical of English embroidery of the high and late Middle Ages. Mostly high. And there you can see the satin. In the Middle Ages, satin was made from silk, or silk blended with other fibres such as cotton. The word satin is said to derive indirectly from the name of a major location in China from where silk was exported, Xuanzhou. Satin may have arrived in Europe in the 12th century, perhaps reaching England by the late 13th century, and Lucca, Italy, was a major trading centre. There are accounts of satin being worn by men in the late 14th century, from Roger Mortimer's embroidered dancing doublet and hanselin, to the scandalous cutted slops and hanselines of Chaucer, and fragments of satin that have been unearthed from sites in late medieval London and the Czech Republic, among others. Satin was used as a backing for embroidery, and has may have been used for lining outer garments such as hoopalans and also for furnishings. There you have it, three basic weaves to get you started in understanding medieval fabrics. There's a lot more to it and I haven't even started to talk about changing loom technologies, fibres, yarns, complex weaves or any of that stuff. I'm hoping we'll be able to release more videos covering those topics this year. Thank you for watching. I hope to see you all in the next video. Please feel free to like, comment, subscribe, check out my references below, and remember to have fun, stay safe, and keep reenacting.